friends, it's Mandy with Sweetly Home and today I want to share with you my kids art cupboard and how we organize all of their art supplies. My kids are really crafty and creative and we needed a spot that was going to serve them well because I wanted them to be able to access this system, to be able to get everything out as well as clean it all up and put it away. That makes my mom life so much easier and I know that they have the capability and the power and the ability to use this system and use it well. I'm also going to share with you how I store all of my daughter's art projects. My son is not quite at the age where he's creating a ton of different things. He really likes to use play-doh, that's kind of his favorite medium, but my daughter is making crafts, drawings, paintings, the whole nine yards all the time. And as a mom, sometimes it can get really overwhelming. I don't mind hanging her creations on the fridge, but there's so many of them that I want her to feel honored because I don't want to just throw them all away and hurt her feelings. So I want her to feel honored with keeping those things within a system that's contained without overrunning my house. I'll show you how I do it. So here in our kitchen, I have this set of pantry cupboards here on the left-hand side of the screen. And in there is where we keep the kids' art supplies. Now, the cupboard on the right, that is where our home management command center is. And it's just super convenient to have both of these cupboards side by side. So I'm gonna zoom you in and share with you what is inside of the cupboard. Okay, I apologize because the area is a little narrow where I'm at, but on the top here is just an extension of our command center for the family. Um, I will go through that in a separate video. Today we're just going to concentrate on the art supplies, but that's what's on the top shelf. And then we pan down and here is the second shelf. And then the third. And then finally the bottom. We are going to look a little closer at these two shelves in the middle. Okay, so right in front, this is a caddy that is from 31 Gifts. Okay, so here's a little more look at the art caddy. I will insert the name of what this project is called here on the screen. You can get this from your local 31 consultant. So inside, what I have done is I have just put some old cups. So these I think were probably from the movie theater or the dollar store or something like that. They were drinking cups that just kind of had seen better days. And so I put three inside of the front of this particular caddy and one holds the pencils and pens. And one holds markers. So this cup actually we use for paint. And then there's also one that has scissors and some glue right there. So that keeps things kind of organized um, in a system that my kiddos can easily maintain. On the side here, I again used to be really into scrapbooking and I have these Martha Stewart punches, but I'm no longer using them so I knew my kids would have a lot of fun with them. So they just fit here on the side of the caddy and they're able to use these for all of their art projects. On the back we have a ruler, it's quite big, it extends a little bit beyond the caddy itself, but that's a-okay. Um, inside here I have also just used what we have on hand as far as organizing. So we just had this little zip bag and inside of here there's more glue, there is um, rubber stamp stuff, there are stencils, uh, pencil sharpeners, tape, just other little supplies that are loose and kind of random and make more sense being contained in a bag rather than just loose in the caddy itself. I've also got chalk for the sidewalk. Some chipboard letters. Again, this was some scrapbooking stuff and these are kind of what they're like. They're a bit like cardboard, very thick cardboard and so my daughter can use these to create words and pictures and things like that. And then we also just have a baggie for our chalkboard that is in the hall for my kids. So that is pretty much everything that is inside of this caddy. 
Behind the caddy, I have four different bins. These bins are originally from Target, and I went ahead and I added the vinyl on the front of the bins to let my kiddos know what was inside. So let's take a closer look at those. Okay, so here's the Play-Doh bin. The lids of these really pop off nicely, and it makes it really easy for my kids to be able to get in and out of the bins. And so all the supplies that they need for Play-Doh are contained in here. Usually there's a lot more, but we tend to go through Play-Doh fairly quickly around here because it is one of the kids' favorite art supplies to play with. Next up is the sticker box, and inside of here is just what it sounds like, all kinds of stickers. Now, I used to be really big into scrapbooking, but I haven't touched scrapbooking in years and years. And so what I did was I just cut down a lot of old scrapbooking letters that I used to have, and these are really great for my daughter, especially as she's learning to spell and she's in the beginning stages of reading. Um, and then we just got all kinds of other random stickers in here as well. They never want <laughs> for stickers. You can see here how deep this pantry cupboard actually is. And I'm able to put four bins inside of this shelf, two on top of each other, and then have the caddy still in front. So we've got a bin, f bin for paints, and inside there are, of course, paint and paint brushes and art smocks for the kids. Um, in the bottom bin is doodads. So basically, this is um, pipe cleaners and pom-pom balls and all kinds of little teeny things that can do a lot for creativity's sake but can get very messy. So having these items in the back of the shelf makes it so that I, as mummy, have to reach back and get those items for my kids. They have access to the things that aren't too particularly messy like Play-Doh and stickers in the front and they're able to reach and grab those. But when it comes to things that are way more messy, Mommy needs to be able to get those, so they are at the back of the cabinet. And here is the next shelf of the art cabinet. I have not tidied this up in any way, shape, or form. This is just a system that my kids are really able to take care of and manage on their own. I clean it out about twice a year just to make sure that what we're using hasn't kind of dried up and that it is in good working order, but for the most part, my kids are really able to take care of this space themselves. So on the top here, I have a box of crayons, and again, just as the name suggests, it is filled with crayons. I'm a big fan of using whatever you have on hand for supplies, and I had this shoe box here. It was a gift for my birthday a few years ago. I love cupcakes and I love pink, um, and it seemed to go so well with the color scheme that we had going on with the art cabinet, so I decided to let the kiddos use it. And inside of this bin are puzzles. They've just got all kinds of various little puzzles. They do have some puzzles still in their bedrooms and things, but these are a little bit more um, smaller and rather than cluttering up their rooms with all kinds of puzzles, it's just easier to have here in this cabinet. Okay, so in the back I've got some more things. So on the left there are two learning books. Um, they are for kindergarten and first grade and they have all kinds of skills and things like that that my daughter can do. And throughout the summer I actually have her do a couple pages a day to just keep her mind sharp. Um, and then to the next, next to it I have a green binder and this is something I've had forever but I decided to let my daughter use it for her art and my son too. But my daughter's really really into drawing pictures and creating and things a little bit more than my little guy. So I'll pull that out and I will show you everything inside of it. I don't know about you, but I can get really overwhelmed with all of the artwork that my kids create. My daughter is in first grade and she is bringing home artwork and papers and stories all the time and she wants to display them everywhere. I don't mind having artwork on my fridge. I actually kind of really like it, um, but we keep it up for about a week and then on the weekend we take it down in anticipation for whatever's coming home that upcoming week at school. But for all the things that she creates at home and even some of those special things that she wants to keep from school, what I've done is I've put together this binder. Now, this is nothing special. This is a binder that I've had for years and years, like 
<laughs> I don't know, like 10 years. It's crazy. Um, and then inside, I just have all of these folders. These were just things that I had on hand. And so she is able to just put her artwork inside of these folders. And she doesn't really have that much in here. Um, but she's able to just put things in here to keep for as long as she sees fit. Now, you could also do this with these page protectors and make sort of like a portfolio for your kids. That is what I initially had intended to do, but I found this um, binder just filled with all of these folders that I was saving, and it just made more sense to do that since the binder was already ready to go. And then she is able to pull this out and show it to grandma or to show it to anybody who comes over for a visit and share with them all of the artwork that she has done. So next to that are two pink magazine containers. I actually had these in my office for the longest time and I hope to actually move them back to my office, but I found my kids were really needing something to corral their loose paper as well as their coloring books. So as you can see, we have all of our coloring books here in this magazine rack and it is stuffed full. We actually can't fit any more in and that's a really good way to manage your space. Do not bring more things into your home than you actually have space for. It makes no sense for us to bring in more coloring books when we have this many already. Once my kids have basically used the coloring book up, we will recycle it and then we can get more. Coloring books are a dime a dozen, they're super fun and it's fun for them to get a new coloring book, but at this point in the game we've got just what we can handle. The other magazine rack has various papers. So, oh, actually there's two coloring books in here, so we have actually moved over into this one. So even bigger indication that it may be time to kind of go through some of the coloring books and see what's been used, you know, up, <laughs> and it's time to get rid of. So we just have all kinds of paper here. There's line paper, there's uh, construction paper, cardstock, there is small pads of paper, there are drawing pads, there are actually even um, books, like a create your own book type thing. And then these are from the Target Dollar Spot, they're dry erase marker boards and you can practice your lettering with those. So my daughter can use those to practice her writing. And the last thing on the right there, that is a clay charms kit she got, my daughter got for Christmas, and it just makes sense to have it right there. It fits, and she can use that whenever she wants. So there you have it. It is our kids art cupboard, and it is how we store all the art supplies that are available to my children. I hope you found some ideas within this video of things that you can do to kind of organize those supplies. Trust me, I know they can multiply and multiply and multiply, especially around the holidays and the kids' birthdays, because it seems that, at least for my kids, they get lots of crafts and supplies and things like that, and I needed a way to contain it well. So if you like this video and you want to see more organization tips from me, a real mom, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're storing your supplies for your kiddos. I'd really love to hear. We're always looking to tweak systems. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.